what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. So just wanna to talk to you guys about what's going on in the channel, what's going on in this constrictor chamber, what's going on with the snakes. And this is pretty much for the people who are, you know, the ones that are subscribed or the ones that are, you know, really in, like uh, following the channel a little bit more than people who are just floating around. If you guys are curious about what's going on, you guys can stick around and find out. Um, but I really want to talk to you guys and have your guys' input on what's going to be going on because it would be cool to have you guys a little bit involved with the future stuff of what's going to happen with a lot of these snakes. So um, really thinking about diving in and possibly going into breeding. So you guys know I love the boas. Um, and I would love to breed the boas at some point. Uh, that makes me nervous because boas, it's very stressful on boas to give live birth. And a lot of times they don't make it. So it would really suck to try to breed some of these animals knowing that there's a huge possibility of them dying. Uh, honestly, there's a possibility of them dying at any time, even if they're not bred. So, you know, you got to take it for what it's worth. But I think breeding them increases the chance of them dying, which kind of sucks. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm years away from that anyways. My biggest, um, you know, one of my biggest projects that I really want to do is breed green anacondas. I still need a male. My two that I have are very small. They're very young. So I have many years from that. I'm at least two to three. Uh, which seems like a long time, but in reality, it's really not that long. So um, we'll see how that works on the size of them. Uh, it seems like green anaconda breeders are a little secretive on how to breed because there's very few breeders and there's a big market. So I can understand that a little bit because, you know, they, they want to keep some of that money for themselves, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> it can't be that difficult. Um, so first, I just want to say, yeah, I got into snakes maybe six-ish years ago. Never thought about breeding, never wanted to breed. Um, never got into the hobby or the industry um, for any type of money at all. In six-ish years that I've owned snakes, I haven't made a dime off of them. I've, I've definitely gone uh, in debt because of them. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure some of you guys have as well. We're not going to go into my financial uh, instabilities on <laughs> snake purchases. But I think if it's a passion, if it's something that you guys care about, and it's something that you guys, um, you know, it brings you joy, there's nothing wrong with investing, no matter what it is or how much it is. And it's something that makes you happy. Um, myself and some of you guys have reached out to me saying snakes are a big part of your life because of something catastrophic happened in your life and getting into snakes has helped you mentally, um, has helped you physically, has helped you overcome something not in a, something that wasn't positive and turn it around, you know, to get your mind off of it. So now you're in a little bit more in a better place mentally or whatever the situation, that's definitely a good thing. And I don't think you can put a price tag on that at all. So, um, you know, a lot of people get into this stuff and I don't want to be the next, I'm a ball pipe on breeder because a lot of people get into this and they're like, I want to get rich quick and I want to get, you know, I want to breed ball pythons and I want to just make money fast because they go to all the shows. They see all these people with all these expensive animals, people handing over cash. And they don't understand what it actually takes to take care of all these animals the bills, the feeding bills and stuff like that. So um, I'm just gonna kind of go off of what, this will be pretty lengthy if you haven't noticed, but we'll look at snakes. So you don't have to look at my ugly mug and I'm, I'm gonna ramble. So I can't really say that I'm not going to, but I'm gonna use me an example on this because I don't have anybody else. Um, so the initial expense an ARS rack is, you guys can Google it. 70, 30 is what, 20? Five hundred, twenty six hundred dollars, and it's only going up on price because parts are hard to find. And you know, I I, I tried to. Luckily, I've I'm very close to John Chosmer. He's only thirty minutes away from me. 
I see him every week. He's been a huge help on um, motivating me on a lot of different stuff and helping me with jeans and just giving me some solid advice. If you guys can reach out to um, a breeder, well-known breeders, um, I would suggest doing that. They'll tell you the goods, they'll tell you the bads, um, they'll tell you what to look out for, but it's up to the individual to you know, listen to them and uh, take their advice and go about that route. So on some of these snakes, I decided to, with the money that I put into them, I went with quantity, or I'm sorry, I went with quality, not quantity. I'm not saying I have the best stuff at all because, I mean, you know, a bunch of people look at my steaks and be like, you got a bunch of basic stuff, <laughs> which is fine. We all got to start somewhere, um, and that's me, um, and a lot of you guys start at the bottom, which is, we'll, we'll work through this together, um, and we'll figure this out. So with the money that I spent on these Minimal amount of snakes. I could have bought like 60 or 70 snakes for way less. Bred them and sold them very quickly for two, three hundred dollars a piece. But let's look at the realistic stuff about it. I mean, it'd be cool to sell hundreds of snakes a month or in a year, you know, make a quick two, three, four hundred dollars. But let's look at what I'm doing right now. So I have 24 ball pythons. And I have 20 other snakes, but we're not going to talk about, talk about those. So we're just going to talk about 24 snakes that I do own. And they're on either rat pups or weaned or small rats. So they're not on mediums yet. And they're not all on small. So once they get to smalls and mediums, then obviously the price is going to go up significantly because, oh, excuse me, it's because they go, they get, uh, they get more expensive. So right now on my 24 ball pythons, I'm paying 60 to $70. And I'll just throw it in there. That's not feeding all the small boas that I have that I have to feed weekly too. But anyways, um, so you guys can figure the math out on that. So instead of, so with the 24 that I have, it takes two years to breed them. At the, at the minimum two years. So they hit a thousand grams and that's if they eat consecutively. We all know ball pythons suck at eating so you're probably gonna waste some food. Let's just say I spend 10 grand on my 24 ball pythons in two years on just feeding. Now just think if I bought a whole bunch of lower dollar snakes and I have 40 or 50 or 60, I have to feed them for two years. That's crazy. And then you have to hope, and then you gotta get an incubator. And then you have to hope, I hope, if I breed, that I'll be able to sell my animals. And I'm a nobody. So people would have to find me, they have to research me, they have to ask around. I have to prove that I'm a good breeder. I have to prove that the genes are right. I have to prove that I have healthy animals. And I can send you an animal and I'm not gonna scam you. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, not just putting two snakes together. So I do see quite a bit of people saying, well, I can get 50 snakes for cheap and I can sell them a ton of them and I'm going to make a lot of money. Okay, cool. Hopefully you got twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in two years just for food. Not the electricity, not the bedding, not the uh, everything else. Hot vet visits if need be. Um, but let's check out some snakes. So I'll show you what I have for next year. Um, we won't go into the 2021s because that's... Ah, we'll go to the male 2021s. But the female 2021s are irrelevant because we'll do that later. So my 2020s, um, the females... Um, so again, the females take about two years to get to 1,000 grams, which is basically breeder size. Um, give or take, some people do a little bit less, and some people wait till 12, 1300, which is perfectly fine. So, I have a basic pied female, nothing wrong with that because you can put a powerhouse male to her, and they're $400. And if you can get a thousand dollar, and if you get a powerhouse male and get a thousand dollar baby out of her, that's $400 well spent, and you didn't need to buy anything crazy. 
But again, if you want a powerhouse female and a powerhouse male, you know, you're looking at a good three or four thousand dollars or more on just a combo. And we have black pastel pied. This girl is really cool because she was born all white. And then over the year, um, she's gotten black spots on her. She's getting more as she grows and sheds, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll do the pies right now, then we'll go now. I only have like five females, so it was just me blabbering around, blabbing my mouth forever. And then we'll just look at these. So this male right here, um, if you'll come out, maybe. I don't want to squish them. They get they get like tucked under this lip right here, and I feel bad like ripping them out. But this one is a orange dream leopard enchi uh, pied. So this dude is has some really cool stuff going on with him, and I mean I could put him to the regular pied and get some cool stuff. I could put him to a black pastel. So that's the only. Well, I have two males. For the pides, and we'll go over here, and then we'll look at this male. Um, so this is a mahogany male. I don't see too many mahoganies, so when I saw him, um, I just had to I just had to pick him up because if you don't see something too often, it's probably a good reason, and well, or <laughs> or a bad reason, but hopefully this is a a good pickup. So again, I could go normal pied and 50% half the clutch would be mahogany's, half the clutch would be normals, which is not bad. Or we can do the mahogany with a black pastel, get normal pieds, mahogany pieds, and if you hit the combo, you get black pastel mahogany pieds which would be cool. Okay, so this is kind of going off track a little bit. So I do have a 2021 female banana pied. The combos hit a banana mahogany pied. It'd be cool if it was a female too. But anyways, we're not talking about those. Well, we kind of are, but we're not. So we'll put him away. Um, I do have a super Mojave um, female, and then I do have a Mystic, so Mystic male next year could go with her. We could try to go Bells or more Mystics or whatever other combos. 2020, it's just a uh, albino, and I do have a male albino, so I mean, that would just be a whole thing of nothing but albinos. We have a pastel. Uh, clown, people either love pastels or they hate them. I see it all over the place. I see more love for them than hate. But I think it really depends on what you're going with and a lot of the high-end stuff. Uh, people don't like pastel and I'm not working with high-end stuff. So I don't have to worry about that. The butter looks really good. She's in shed, coming out of shed. Uh, out of blue, so she should shed here in the next couple days. And I'm going to have to mist this down uh, after this video so she can get a clean shed. So that's the male, or I'm sorry, that's a female. And the only two males that I have for clowns is a male uh, banana, which he's getting a bunch of cool spots on him. Um, still has some nice purples. But anyways, so the male banana clown could go with the pastel or the butter. Then we only have one other male, so I know. We'll see what happens with this guy right here. So a leopard yellow belly clown. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Uh, I'm not good with the yellow belly gene. I'm trusting the Justin Kabulka, um, the breeder. Uh, that it does have yellow belly. So I've heard yellow belly is difficult to see. I've heard gravel, gravel I think, or I don't know, gravel I think it is, hard to see. 
heard they're kind of the same. I don't know if that's Yellow Belly. Who knows? That's what he said. That's what I bought it as. But he's got cool patterns. Okay, anyways. So one of my favorite ball python morphs is the pastel leopard clown. And those are pretty expensive and I didn't want to pay the money when I can just try to make one in a year. I save myself a ton of money. So again, you know, you get regular clown, you get pastel clown, you get leopard clown, yellow belly clown, or yellow belly pastel clown, all the combos. If you hit, if you hit the odds, you can hit no odds and you can all, you can get all four eggs or more of just regular clowns. So, you know, you spend a bunch of money on cool stuff and you just got $200 babies, <laughs> which nothing wrong with it, but you're not paying the bills with that after you, you know, paid X amount of money for one of these dudes. Or, you know, be cool. Maybe it'd be cool with the butter. I don't know. But that's why you guys could get, um, maybe you guys want to get involved a little bit. Let me know what you guys think on the parents. Like I said, I don't have the greatest and the latest. But we all have to start somewhere. And we'll see what the future holds on uh, a lot of this stuff. So this dude just shut out, so he's looking pretty clean right now. Uh, and then we can talk 2021s in another video. I mean, they're pretty irrelevant. I do have some fire stuff, some inchy clowns, fire clowns, um, fire pods, super clowns, some, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll see what's going on. Um, in the future, but maybe you guys can help me out and pair some stuff together. We'll see how it works. And if one year doesn't work, we'll just flip flop some stuff around for, for the next year. It's not like I got 50 snakes, so the banana doesn't go with the pastel well, then we'll see what a banana goes with the butter or the leopard with the butter. You know, so you can flip flop, you know, yearly, which is pretty cool to do. Um, but breeding, it's it's all about the it's all about the snakes. You can have the conditions perfect, they don't breed. Um, they mess up, bad eggs, babies die, all the bad stuff. But there is some positivity, there is some reward to it, or nobody would do it. Um, but it's just, you know, you just got to take the risk, and it can be a very big, expensive risk. But uh, we'll we'll talk more about all of that stuff, and you guys can comment what would be some good parents. And then as next year comes around, look for an incubator, or try to make an incubator, um, and then I'll talk to John about, you know, just more insights on that because he's, it's, like I said, it's always nice to have a very well-known breeder uh, that can help you out. So, again, I appreciate the support, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys stuck around for a little bit. Uh, not too many snakes. is me blabbering my mouth. Um, but, yeah, that, that's it, and I'll see you guys on the next video.